From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. I'm Rob Cairns. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. In this podcast, I have new full digitals, Vice President of European Operations, Kimberly Cole, with me. And we talk about Yoast and their amazing AI product. Sit back, relax, grab a drink, and enjoy the show. This podcast is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency that can help protect your WordPress website today. Go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and see what we can do to help you protect your business investment. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody, Rob Cairns here. And in today's podcast, I have Kimberly Cole, the ex- the Senior VP of Europe for Newfold Digital with me. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for inviting me on the podcast, Rob. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to meet new people in the space and connect and talk and find out what they are doing because they're the ones who, like your company, makes and breaks the space. So I appreciate you so much. Um. Tell us, we were talking offline about your interesting background. You're fairly new at Newfold this year. Can you share a little bit of that background for our listeners? Sure. I joined Newfold Digital on the 1st of May this year. So, yes, it's um, still in my kind of whirlwind learning the business and getting to know uh, so much more about the, the WordPress community. Uh, I spent almost 30 years at Thomson Reuters, so my background is very much market data, big data, uh, and really at that sort of B2B end of the the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, Thomson Reuters is a very big Canadian company. You would obviously uh, know them. And um, very, very strong, you know, news heritage, uh, which uh, I still obviously follow the Reuters news as some of the most, um, you know, reliable, trustworthy news that you can that you can get. Um, And when I left uh, Thomson Reuters, uh, I joined a six-year-old startup in in Hong Kong. So I went from a 150-year-old company to a six-year-old one, um, you know, 50,000 person to, I think we were about 250, 300 people at the, at the startup. So it wasn't sort of tiny, but it was, uh, it was still significantly smaller. And, um, yeah, then I have found I was introduced to this opportunity at uh, Newfold Digital and to lead Yoast and and also our web.com franchise in the UK. And I thought, wow, this sounds like a brilliant opportunity, kind of in the middle of that 150-year-old kind of big, enormous legacy company and the and the startup. I felt that I had the best of both worlds here with Newfold. Yeah, it's interesting because you mentioned Thomson Reuters, and we all know the news business has changed greatly in the last 10 years. I'll share with you, which I didn't share with for. I have a couple, I have a friend, a good friend of mine. He's retired, retired reporter, as he calls himself, not a journalist. I'll tell you that now. He was a day one reporter with the Toronto Sun in Toronto. So, if you, I don't know if you know your Canadian news history, but the sun came out of the ashes of the old Toronto Telegram, and Dave Creighton was the uh, first uh, publisher of the Toronto Sun, and he was a day oneer there, and then wrote Crime for the Star, and finally about ten years ago said, "I'm done." <laughs> but uh, so I have a lot of ties to people that have have written for various news outlets as well. So really interesting parallel to say the least. And yeah. Thank you. So 
what we really wanted to talk about is today is Bluehost, which is uh, one of New Folk's biggest brands, has jumped into the AI space. Isn't that exciting? Are we going to talk about AI, Yoast and AI? Yes. Sorry, Yoast and AI. My apologies. <laughs> I could talk a little bit about Bluehost, but let's talk about Yoast. <laughs> uh, Yoast. And, and, I, and I know from past conversation, our friend uh, Taco has been on touting. We talked about uh, Yoast AI on WP Builds a week ago as well. So he's been talking about it a little bit. So isn't this an exciting time for Yoast? A SEO uh, plugin to jump into AI? Absolutely. So I hope most of the audience knows a little bit about Yoast. And uh, uh, I guess I would describe it as the the leading search engine optimization plugin, certainly for WordPress. You know, we've got over 13 million users of the plugin. And I think from its very inception has been innovative in terms of what it's been thinking and how it's going to uh, continue to evolve and uh, help our, our customers use search engine optimization most effectively. So we are super excited that we have jumped into the AI space. Uh, we actually released our uh, AI capabilities in August and we kind of did it on a you know, a little quietly, quietly, bit of a stealth mode kind of way. Um, we let people opt in and um, put a sort of beta label on it so that we could just test out a few things and make sure that everything worked as optimally as we wanted it to. And then on August 28, we made a bit more of a fanfare and uh, released it to everybody and uh, turned it on. Um, in that in that release, um, which we are super excited about. Yeah, I have actually, uh, I use Yoast. So there's uh, great. And I played with the tool and I love the tool. And I personally think SEO was one of those areas of the AI space. And we know AI does a multitude of things. Interesting enough, ChatGPT just recently celebrated its first birthday. So there's that. I, yes, I was just actually listening to another um, podcast around and they were talking about that as well. <laughs> was that the Do The Woo podcast, Kimberly? It wasn't. It was just an Australian. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, and they were saying, so we know AI can do a lot of things. I've been saying for a long time, SEO is good pickings for AI. It's a good marriage to do AI. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Look, I think there's a lot of things where um, it's a great tool because we can save people time on, you know, generating product descriptions. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's just much faster and easier. Um, it can also, I think there's several things that people, you know, want to get out of, you know, using AI. And we we still think, you know, you need a human in the loop on a lot of these things. But, you know, consistency, so that ability to sort of have a, a more uniform tone and style that can add familiarity to the way you're creating your titles and your descriptions um, across a website. We think, you know, AI can really help with that. Um, Optimization, you know, making sure that you're, you know, everything that we're doing is obviously about optimization and trying to make sure that you can be discovered. But obviously, with AI can help us um, with that some of that optimization, and then also people get blocks on how they should write things. So actually, using AI to get a bit more diversity in the titles and the descriptions, and allowing you to um, just have a bit more effective way that you're creating some of those titles. But the main thing I think that we're hearing from everyone that we speak to is just that time-saving ability. So the fact that we can automate not only the bits that we've done, but obviously some of the things that we're thinking in the future, and it just really streamlines the entire search engine optimization um, process. And, you know, the way we think about search engine optimization is really quite holistically. And so if we can 
take away some of those kind of menial tasks and, and improve the, the time saving there, it means that people can really focus a lot more on the quality of their content, which is absolutely key. Um, so yeah, that's some of our, uh, our some of our thinking of what we what we were trying to achieve, and and so far getting quite good response from from some of our users. I think I think the two things you hit on the head was one is consistency because as marketers we all know that consistency matters, and a lot of people miss that. Right? It's like whatever you do, the as consistent as you can be is key, and the other is time saving. Um, yeah. I've seen, like, I don't believe you can do AI without a human intervention at this point. I, I really don't. So I'm not in the camp where as we move to AI tools that we all uh, are worried about jobs. It's the same way we all use plugins, the same way we all use page builders, the same way we all use all these other great tools. AI is just another one of those tools. So what it's done is it's kind of reformed or changed how we do a website versus the end all, the be all. And I think, uh, I know I use AI in a lot of my stuff and I've cut some of my production time, 50 to 75%, if you can believe that. Are you hearing numbers like that or have you not? You yeah, I, I think it really sort of depends at the moment, which I guess is the, <laughs> the standard yeah. answer of a lot of things. Um, but we, we're generally hearing people saying that it is really saving them time. I don't know that we've got any proper examples. I would absolutely love that if someone could, you know, tell me how much time they feel that it has saved them. But I think some of the other things as we um, progress um, down the AI um, path will um, add to those time-saving um, uh, areas as well but but as you say AI is not perfect um, and I'm sure it will continue to improve but you know what we're spending a lot of time on is the intelligent prompts and making sure that the expertise and the knowledge that we have in-house can really develop those prompts as as effectively as possible because yeah. You know, we we want it to pass our own SEO um, scoring system, and you know, AI still um, has some way to go. Um, can I ask if the back end is open AI, or would you rather not share that? Um, at the moment, yeah. we are doing. We are on Chat GPT three, yeah. um, and we're going to continue to evolve um, what we're using. Yeah, that's interesting. And we all know about the kerfuffle with the head of ChatGPT, right? And OpenAI and that whole mess. I mean, how can you as a CEO? Apparently there was an Australian lady who was involved in the whole scam. Yes, yes. And how can you lose a job and be rehired three days later? And, you know, it's funny. And I don't know how much you've read, Kimberly, and how much you know, but I think Microsoft had a big push in all this because the rumor was when he left, he was going to Microsoft and then he ended up back in. And if you know the structure, the, the open AI consortium, Microsoft's a big player in that consortium, right? So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they invested significantly. So you would have thought someone might have checked with them first. Yeah, well. <laughs> From what I, what I've read, and I could be wrong, so don't quote me. The four, it's a small board, and they're not really well versed in tech. And that's, I hate to say, it, that's not uncommon in VCs like these days. They're they're in it to see how much a return on revenue they can get quickly instead of the long term of the product. Sometimes, so yeah. it's a bit mm. interesting. Very um, interesting. How long did it take Newfold to build this product out? Because it's really interesting. And I think there was a lot of work and a lot of care that went into it. Yeah, I think with a lot of the way that um, certainly that Yoast thinks about how they're going to roll things out is that they want to get it, you know, right um, uh, before they release um, solutions. So, yeah, they spent a bit of time making sure that it was going to pass through the the traffic light system um, effectively and that we were going to, you know, get all of the right results that we wanted. And I would say there's still some improvements there and some of that is just because of the capabilities of ChatGPT itself. So 
we I think we will continue to see improvements, but I feel, still think you know you are better off to get something out there because you know what we can do and help with people with even now is, is a great result. Um, Newfold across the board is, of course, look, has AI capabilities in in multiple um, areas, and we certainly, um, you know, and we have a lot of skills and knowledge um, across the organisation as well. So there was a lot of um, discussion and collaboration with other teams as well, um, so that we, you know, we just don't have to reinvent the wheel multiple times to do to do certain things across our um, different families of, of products. So. Um, yeah, we certainly collaborated on on AI and what we were we were doing for um, in, in the Yoast area, but obviously speaking to our colleagues in in Bluehost and HostGator and and across the board. Yeah, and I think that really helps is because you've already dove into some of those areas, so you're not reinventing the wheel. And we know in the tech business, the worst thing we can do is keep going back to the well and reinventing because there's an R and D cost, there's a cost to doing all kinds of things. I spent a lot of my career actually before I got into running my own agency in a support role. So, oh, do, do I know, like, that's just a taboo for disaster, right? So I think you've been really smart about it. Yeah, look, I think it's super exciting because if we can just use the all of the great minds across the organisation, it means we can come up with some really um, innovative ideas going forward. And, yeah, I love some of the conversations that we're having at the moment, which is just, you know, absolute brainstorming about, but what about if we did this and what about if we did the other? And obviously I'm not going to share all of those things, but, no, you know, watch this okay. space. <laughs> you got to keep a little under your hat so when us <laughs> users see something bright and shiny in six months, we can say, hey, you know, like, <laughs> I, I, get, I get that. Um, this, so you've got your product and I think one thing you've done well is you said you just wanted to get it out. And I think that's really important in this space because first to market is a big deal or being an early one to market. There are some people that don't jump on early products. I'm kind of in between depending on what I do. This one I jumped on, some I don't jump on. You know, I not only am I an agency owner, I, I'll admit I'm a technology geek from the heart back to <laughs> back, back to the days of the Apple II and Steve Jobs. So I've been in this game a long time. And so I'm kind of, this one I jumped on, AI, I jumped on really quickly, but most physical products, I say, oh, I'm going to wait six months. Um, have you seen a lot of benefit of being one of the first to market in this space? Yeah, look, I think there was a lot of, um, you know, people expecting that, you know, you, we would add something for AI. So I think absolutely it was, it was you know, we, I don't think we were too late. I don't think we were too early. I think we sort of timed it pretty well. Um, I think the initial, you know, things that we've done with um, the AI generation for um, titles and, and meta descriptions and oh, yeah. the, the social previews and social descriptions, um, and we'll increasingly look at, you know, what additional content types we can bring in. We've got, um, we're supporting WooCommerce, you know, products as well um, mm -hmm. for posts and pages. So I think, um, you know, that's, they're sort of like the initial really core things that, you know, were great to get out there. But then, you know, all of the things that we're thinking going forward that I think will even be more time saving. So one of the, the ones that we've had the most requests for is um, bulk editor to be able to do a lot more. Please. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm in that camp because I'm actually using um, Yoast and the AI on it on a large e-commerce site. This site will have probably by the time I'm done about somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 products. It's a variable product site. <laughs> right. So all ladies love jewelry. So that's what I'm building out for. I have a, a friend who runs an independent jewelry store. And I, and I got to tell you, it's made descriptions so much easier. Like Excellent. from a, from an end user standpoint, I could not be happier, Kimberly. Like it's just. That's great. So I think, you know, that's the kind of response, I guess, we want going forward on, on everything that we do. And I think, um, 
you know, AI just gives us some really kind of interesting areas where I think we can help the the end customer really um, improve the way that they do things. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of excited about um, some of those things. And I guess, you know, some of the other things that we're passionate about is, you know, around readability and, and um, I think we'll be able to do some interesting AI capabilities there. Um, the bulk editor one is obviously one that we've had a lot of requests for. So I think that's um, that's definitely high on the list. And um, yeah, we've got um, a new uh, product director starting in um, in January too. So hopefully he will bring some interesting um some interesting ideas and perspectives as well it's always good to get new perspectives sometimes i think you know you you mentioned you've worked for big companies you've worked for small companies and part of it is i hate to say it, we all get tunnel vision sometimes so we get on a track and we see and sometimes when you go and bring somebody new and it makes a difference to that and it brings those fresh ideas in so i think that's a really great idea actually i'm I'm so not against that. Um, okay, so you guys are in the uh, new fold. Yoast is in the AI space. There's a couple other SEO products out there starting to go there. Uh, what separates what uh, new fold Yoast is doing from those other products? I mean, look, I think a lot of it is our heritage and knowledge in the space. Yep. Um, you know, we've got, we've got sort of, you know, 13 million users out there and we've got a lot of experience, talent and knowledge. And obviously then with Newfold investing, you know, we're pretty serious about making sure that we continue to innovate and we continue to be the real sort of authority in the SEO space. Um we brought in two new SEOs um, during this year with Alex Moss and Carolyn Shelby um, as well. And as you say, like I think just bringing in new fresh talent all the time, um, you know, adds a lot more to, you know, we've got a very solid foundation of a team and a really strong team and, you know, Taco and there's so many other great, yeah. um, you know, people within the organisation. So it's actually just amplifying all of those people and skills that we have and connecting um with some of the other the brands within uh the new fold portfolio so yeah super exciting yeah and and frankly in taco you have the biggest cheerleader for your organization you could have out there he's just i've had him on the show i consider him a friend i've been on other podcasts with him he's just a wonderful guy and i think from a getting information out there and reaching out to the community he's i know you have other people that do it but he's the one that's front and center and believe me he is just a wonderful man so he absolutely is and he is a wonderful part of the and so well connected in the in the wordpress community and um and uh you know at word camps etc and uh actually um, helps lead several of the other initiatives that the company has around our diversity fund um, and some of the other community initiatives that we do, which I think are also, you know, fantastic parts of the Yoast um, business and what we do as part of our WordPress um, engagement. Yeah, and I think um, Yoast and the brand should be really a new fault should be commended for the diversity fund. I mean, that's not what we're really talking about, but it's worth mentioning. I think your organization has made an effort to help make the play, the space a better place and to be more diverse with that fund. And all I can say there is congratulations for what you've done for the community. It matters. Thank you very much. And I will tell the team because we they spend a yeah. lot of time on that. And um, I do think it's great that people recognize it. I do. Um, so we've talked a little about build product. And my, my question always is, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. I've been in the WordPress space for full-time 15 years, probably longer than that part-time. And so I consider myself pretty experienced. So I'm a really bad guy to say, was it easy to install? 
Um, <laughs> it's just because, because I've done it. I mean, I still remember the days when we used to do a five minute WordPress install and we didn't have an easy installer you collect. I remember those days. I, I still remember moving sites around without tools, like, you know, and, and you're laughing, but it's true. <laughs> it's yeah. just, and and then and the new generation of developers, designers, and users have no concept of that because we've made it so much more streamlined, which has probably pushed WordPress's adoption rate to where it is right now. How would you say the setup process this is for somebody really new or junior? Yeah. Look, I think our focus is continually on making things easier, more streamlined. I think, you know, that's what the world wants. You know, we, you know, now that you can click that AI button and it does stuff for you, people kind of want that magic button for everything. And uh, I think the focus needs to be always on thinking about how do we make this easier i think we have a lot of novice users we don't have all the people who are in that space like you who have done this for 15 years and somehow we've got to manage both those real novices and those beginners and then still you know the other end of the spectrum who want to be able to have a bit more control and still be able to customize some of the way things are done i think that's also important at that kind of enterprise level where you probably want all the yoast capabilities but you might want more sort of building blocks where you can customize what bits and elements you want for your um, large uh, enterprise site um yeah. Do we have all of that right now? No, but that's always sort of, you know, top of mind is how do you make it easier and deliver better for what all of those range of customers are, are looking for? Yeah, and what you're talking about is what every organization goes through from a support standpoint, right, Kimberly? Like, I'm I'm just kind of, you were saying that, that I was reflecting back to my days. I was a team leader for uh, Toronto's second biggest hospital at one time in the IT support call center. So, and I was thinking about that cross section is, you know, you're always helping the newer new user and then you're helping the executive assistant who knows it all. And, you know, and I'm not, I'm not demoralizing it, but it's different importances for different people. Right. Yeah. Well, we just actually had our Black Friday uh, yeah. sale on as of course everybody did Black Friday and Cyber Monday and it was great I actually sat on our live chat um, sessions for over over the sort of five days that we had the sale on not for the whole five days but I did shifts like everyone else and um, it was actually very interesting to sort of see the yeah. types of questions you got and we still did even though this was primarily about selling Yoast premium services at a at a black friday rate we were still getting you know questions on can you um, trying to install it or i've got this problem and you know we were still doing kind of help desk queries and yeah. it does make you appreciate that you all of those things you've got to think about that entire customer experience and we try to do a lot in that space with you know, the academy as well as our help desk and all of those elements that we consider being core parts of the product, not just those enhancements that we're that we're making to to also impress and, and deliver on what people want. You should be commended for doing that. I used to have when I was at that hospital, I had a CTO who's now retired, and I did invite him down every three months to spend half a day with me. And what I do is I'd hand him my mic and i would make the cto take live calls <laughs> not not to actually do the work because that wasn't his skill set but i got him to take live calls from clients and he said and him and i had a conversation recently like he retired about a year ago and he said you know doing those live calls made me a better cto and i think that makes you a better senior vp in the long run yeah and and it was it was really interesting both yeah obviously hearing what the customers were asking and having that conversation with them, but also just working with the whole of the support team who yeah. maybe we made their job harder. 
<laughs> because half the time we were having to ask them like, oh my God, this customer's asked me something. <laughs> but, that's it. but that's okay because you're learning too. And I'm sure your support team probably appreciated you taking the time to go in that role. A lot of people in your position wouldn't do that. So I think by doing that, you probably, you know, bite yourself a lot in the long run there. So I would uh, think so. It was great fun. We were all huddled in together on Friday yeah. night and we got pizza in. And <laughs> I love it. it. I love it. Um, as you move forward with your product, is there anything on the roadmap you can share at this point or would you rather just keep it under your head? Yeah, look, I mean, I think it was, I already sort of outlined some of those things like the, yeah. the bulk editor and things. Um, sort of those things we'll do um, you know we're looking at more content types uh, as I said so how do we do sort of that AI title and meta description but for broader content types we're looking at all of our other you know plugins like our news plugin and things yes. that we can do there um, so yeah we've got a whole lot of stuff in there and then of course working with our colleagues at um, Bluehost as well to work out how we can plug in um, better across there um wonder blocks and how yes. that will work so yeah there's some there's some good stuff coming there's some really exciting stuff coming i think <laughs> and as i said i don't know where i'd be without it building this rg commerce store it's just uh think of the time to put all those descriptions in from scratch and it's just it's just complicated <laughs> This is, is about well, well I, I think we're gonna have to have your you know, we'll have to have you as a testimonial on um, think, on our site. <laughs> well, if, really, if, somebody, <laughs> if somebody wants to know more about uh the Yoast product, um what you're doing, how's the best way for them to stay in touch? Well, obviously, we have a whole lot of uh, information on our um, website and you can sign up for our newsletter. We also do monthly uh, webinars that are called the SEO Report by Yoast. And we have uh, Caroline Shelby and Alex Moss speaking on those. So we do a good roundup of all of the news and everything that's been going on in the SEO space. Uh, so look out for those. Um, for the novices, because we did talk about them as well, we do monthly um, getting started with SEO, um, you know, beginner's guides. And there was actually one uh, on just uh, earlier today, but they happen every month. So you'll have someone, a couple of people from our support team or other people across the organisation, and they walk you through step by step on those sort of key basics. And then we do a good Q&A. So I would highly recommend um that as well but yeah those webinars sign up for our newsletter um but they're the they're the main ways yeah kimberly thanks very much for your time have a happy holiday merry christmas I hope the new year is good to you and your team and your family thank you so much rob and same to you and great talking to you thanks and hopefully we'll get to talk again sometime down the road it'd be a pleasure thank you this show is brought to you by StunningDigitalMarketing.com, your Toronto leader in digital marketing services. Not only do we protect your WordPress website, we can help you with your site, provide social media management for your business, or even do one-on-one -on -one consulting. To find out more, go to StunningDigitalMarketing.com. A very special thank you to Kimberly Cole for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. Hey, everybody, Rob here again. Thanks for listening to the SDM Show. It's such a pleasure to have you every week. If you want more on our agency website, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. We are your WordPress security experts. We'd be glad to help you out. If you want to learn more about me, Rob Cairns, go to meetrobcairns.online. From there, you can find links to everything I do on the web, as well as book time with me. So feel free. If you want to make comments about this podcast or know a guest possibly suitable for the podcast, please email us at podcast 
at stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Or conversely, you can go to X, formerly known as Twitter, and tweet at me at Rob Cairns. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much, and I love you. Please join us next week for another interesting podcast, and have a great week, everybody. Bye for now.